Hello and welcome, one and all. This is Old School Gamer 1971 here. Millie, Lloyd, everyone, I hope you're all having a good day. If you would, please like and comment. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Support the channel and help it grow. Today's thoughts is on Erica. I've been playing this game for around three hours, and this is what I think. Erica, developed by Flavorworks, is a horror FMV that came to the PlayStation 4 in 2019. Taking inspiration from Greek mythology and occultism, it's quite a concoction. Adding murder and an asylum, it's quite a story that, as far as I am aware, is all its own thing. Flavorworks was founded in 2015 and is based in London, England, on Old Street, also known as Silicon Roundabout. Their vision has always been one of making the most interactive video games possible. Funded by Peter Molyneux and Ian Livingstone, names I recognise from the Amstrad Spectrum and Commodore and also Amiga eras. This is their first game, Erica, and was funded and published by Sony. This game was made by a team of just eight, but their ambitions of bigger and better projects are yet to come. You play as Erica, a young lady who suffers nightmares about the night she witnessed her father being murdered. When traumatic happenings bring about new gruesome clues to the fore, you must go further down the rabbit hole to unearth a shocking truth. With twists and turns along the way, it is deciding your friends and knowing your enemies, as you go ever deeper into the underworld. When people start dying around you and you seem to be in the sights, does finally the truth reveal itself? So is this Erica a psychological thriller or is it Erica a homeopathy remedy? Years ago you could have complained about the video quality of these games. Now they're as clear as anything. This makes it easier to get into. This is a on the rails kind of story. You do make the odd choices, but it's not really about directions. One thing of note is the use of colour, lens flare and blur. They're all used to great effect during different portions of this game. As to the graphical stylings, I like the oldie world stuff here. It really fits in with the story and the atmosphere. This looked and felt very different, and I don't mean in a bad way. It's good to see companies experiment, and that is what this feels like here, almost like a bridge between video games and movies, one where you make choices and face the consequences. In short, this all looks great and really helps with the atmosphere. So let me start off by saying they made some fantastic cast choices. Because the game is an on the rails FMV game, the voiceover and acting needs to be consistent. So if the cast was irritating, or worse still, crap, you would notice in about 5 seconds flat. Fortunately, whilst not top billing actors, they're more than competent and add to the strong script. I never felt bored, nor did I ever feel disinterested. Instead, I was drawn into the story and invested in the characters. The ambient sound also makes the world seem believable. The authenticity in the oldie world stuff is also fantastic, even down to like the sounds of the phone and the radio and stuff like that. Out of all the full motion video games I have played so far, this has been the best 
by far and the closest a game has ever been to a movie. Sound is a big part of that, so well done. The hand belonged to a Cal Jahar. He worked at Delphi House. I believe you visited there with your father. Whilst there is not a lot of gameplay here, it's about the story and the journey to the big ending. There is so much information for you to find, finding the evidence and piecing it together. I will be honest, using your phone as the controller is better for this game. This is different to most FMV games that I have played. Most of the games in the genre expects is movements and responses. Whilst there is an odd bit of this on show here, it is mostly on the rails. This might have seemed damaging to the overall game, but for me, it had a story to tell and it was going to tell it. The story is up to interpretation and is really dependent upon how far you wish to go down the rabbit hole with the evidence and how open your mind is to thinking about things of an occult nature. Without your interest in that topic, you will get very little from this game. This game drew me in and the story never really let me go. Even after the ending I was thinking about what I could have done differently. It's the mark of a good narrative experience. The setting jumps out at you, the oldie world stuff adds to the overall feeling of the game. Sounds and visuals add to the great characterization. There is not a lot to pull you out of the game. I could not find a real fault. That does not mean that this game is perfect, only that it has a journey that I happily journeyed on that strung me along until the ending and best of all it left me feeling fulfilled. Knowing that there is more for me to find, more endings to see, I just hope that there is more games like this to come from this developer. By this point it might have become more than a little obvious but this was a positive experience for me. This was great on controller, better still on the phone. This is an advancement in media. This allows the story to have more depth but only if you choose to delve into the evidence. My playthrough felt about the right runtime. A couple of hours means none of it was filler. That is what I felt at the end of the game. I saw the trailer over a year ago and then I forgot all about it until its surprise release. This to me was a great game that shows you that gameplay can sometimes play second fiddle if the characters, story and ending are strong enough. just like you if you are hearing this you made it all the way to the end of the video well done give it a thumbs up and comment if you enjoy the video please share as it helps the channel grow and improve enjoy your day old school gamer 1971 signing off